flippening heck. Nah, sorry, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? I can do better. I can do better. Flippening, flippening. Oh, it's just an awkward word, isn't it? It is an important one though, and it's everywhere at the moment. We're gonna tell you why in just a second. There's also a lot of chat today about forks on the Ethereum blockchain, as well as price post merge. Binance is unhappy too about a Coindesk claim. It lost 90% of its customers. Do stay tuned for that one. Sales of NFTs, meanwhile, have slipped below a billion dollars for the second month in a row. Is it the new normal for tokens? We're gonna to be asking that question. This is what's happening from Asia to the world. Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. Well, Ethereum is the big theme right now in crypto markets. There are obviously big questions about what's going to happen after the merge, whenever the merge actually goes ahead. Ether has overtaken Bitcoin in the options market for the first time on the Deribit exchange. Let's waste no time in figuring out what's going on, what it all means. We're going to talk to Igneous Terenus in just a second. He's head of communications at Bybit. First, though, uh, let's check in with uh, the chief marketing officer at Bit.com, Toya Jang, who joins us. Uh, Toya, are you surprised at all by what we've seen in uh, the options market? And tell us what exactly it means. It's not a surprise to see that uh, the open interest of Ethereum options is overtaking Bitcoin, because judging from the data that Bitcoin is actually decreasing um, from early this year, the whole market conditions evolves. And Ethereum is the only cryptocurrency that has option um, product that has some market movement recently, the price volatility re recently. And ahead of uh, Ethereum merge, uh, the 2.0 coming, people, also sophisticated traders, are starting to protect their positions by adopting options trading. So uh, that's what we see nowadays. Bitcoin is still dominant in terms of uh, market share, but considering the market volatility is even lower or the expected um, mark, uh, price movement is lower than Ethereum. So we have, we see, we've seen a surge of um, trading interest of Ethereum. Toya, look, some have even suggested this could potentially be a precursor to the flippening, a very awkward word, as I said, but a very important moment, a long anticipated moment, potentially, uh, when we see uh, the market cap of Ether overtake that of Bitcoin. We are some way off that, of course. Ether's uh, market cap uh, around 196 billion uh, compared to uh, Bitcoin's 440 billion US dollars as of 10 a.m. Hong Kong time. Um, can you see it, Toya, happening at all, let alone soon? What does it mean? It's highly unlikely, I would say, put it in this way, it's highly unlikely that Ethereum's price is going to overtake Bitcoin. Uh, maybe the, the trading volume and a trading open interest, but not the front price. Short term wise, it's really hinging on whether the, this merge is going to be successful. Like another example is if um, Elon Musk has a rocket launch that failed. Uh, I think the, the stock price will be heavily impacted as well. It's just an incident, it's an event. Um, it's going to short term impact the, uh, the price, but longer term, I think it is going to be highly correlated with the whole market. All right, Igneous, let's turn to you. Uh, Bank of America has uh, meanwhile been talking about uh, scalability. It said that Ethereum needs to improve. Obviously, that is going to be a key reason for the merge and uh, this move to uh, proof of stake. Does it promise enough of an upgrade, though, or could uh, potentially other chains, Tron, Avalanche, Solana, steal uh, Ethereum's thunder? According to Vitalik Buterin, by the time that the Ethereum roadmap is completed, Ethereum can handle, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think 100,000 transactions per second. That is uh, much larger than its current number. And then on top of, uh, uh, you know, in, in those uh, uh, layer two solutions, you can even do more than that. And I think kind of like it's, People tend to criticize, you know, say like, oh, Bitcoin is, is bad because PO, uh, 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 POW and then Ethereum is bad because it doesn't allow for enough scalability. But the thing is like, just because you have scalability doesn't mean that your chain is perfect. Right? You can have all the scalability, but if no one comes to use it, then there's still, uh, it's still a moot point. The, the fact that Ethereum has the largest number of developers, the largest number of investment, and the largest number of uh, just like happening around it is, you know, just like a shorter course than say like a, another alternative layer one claiming that they can have uh, more throughput. 
but then maybe sometime they break down seven times in, in the first uh, quarter of the year um, or you know uh, maybe it's a ghost chain and no one uses it. And another spanner in the works uh, could be uh, Fork's uh, Chinese miner Chandler Guo's proposal of uh, a Fork spin-off of uh, a proof of work for uh, Ethereum has been mooted. Uh, why has it been suggested, do you think? What could it mean uh, and uh, how could it impact the merge? The impetus is, is pretty simple. Like at the moment, the miners, uh, like especially in the past year, they're actually seeing record uh, uh, income revenue from from those mining activities and once you truly move to uh, ETH uh, uh, like POS proof of stake basically the miners are, are gonna be they basically have no income they, they are basically they are basically shouldering the largest loss in, loss in terms of both revenue and power so uh, they're obviously not gonna um, just roll over uh, but at the same time like is there, is it gonna be like a uh, a long time viable smart contract alternative, uh, smart contract platform. It's very, very unlikely. Uh, a lot of it will just really uh, depend on the consensus and who is building on it. All right, thanks, Ignis Terenis, head of comms at Bybit, and Toya Jang, chief marketing officer at Bit.com. Binance boss Changpeng Zhao has hit out at Coindesk over its reporting. The crypto news outlet claimed on Monday Binance had lost over 90% of its customers. That was after implementing Know Your Customer requirements. Coindesk later corrected its claim. It said it was actually from anti-money laundering requirements, not from Know Your Customer ones. But CZ said the figure was ultimately false anyway and that Binance's market share has been increasing with more than a billion dollars spent on compliance. A Binance spokesperson actually confirmed that to forecast. They said the 90% figure actually related to users of one specific entity, and that entity was off-boarded as a result of violating the platform's terms of use. Quote, those users represented less than a thousandth of a percent of our daily trading volume, according to the spokesperson who added, Believing that the largest exchange on the globe lost 90% of its user base is frankly silly and can be verified on the blockchain. Meanwhile, Vault has been given a three-month lifeline. The Singapore-based exchange filed for creditor protection recently. It's now been extended until November 7th. It could be, though, extended further. Vault has asked for six months grace and claims it will get that as long as they keep authorities in the loop about what's going on. The company says talks are ongoing with Nexo over a potential buyout deal. There is a 60-day exclusivity period on that Nexo offering. That ends September 4th. Vold, of course, halted customer withdrawals on July the 4th. Funds will remain stuck until a deal is reached. Now, NFTs are still struggling. They are certainly a long way from the giddy heights that we saw them reach last year. According to CryptoSlam, the total value of secondary sales of NFTs has just fallen under a billion US dollars for the second month in a row. They were down to just 650 million in July, 25% lower than in June. So what's causing the downturn? Well, Forecast Laughlin Keller is here to tell you. The chill of the crypto winter is deepening in the NFT space. According to data from the NFT aggregation site CryptoSlam, sales limped into July with a 25% drop from June. Sales peaked in January at 4.7 billion US dollars, with more than 1 million unique buyers in the market. Blockchain author Andy Leon told Forecast that sales reflect very much how the markets are reacting. As for Yehuda Pechta of CryptoSlam, he thinks the market is yet to find the bottom. However, he did find a bright spot in the number of unique buyers in the market. Buyers fell just 7% month on month in July, which remains higher than the same month last year. NFTs, they're in a rough place right now, but I still think in a very healthy place um, as far as the growth, as far as the, uh, you know, kind of the number of transactions. So, is the downturn caused by a growing correlation between the crypto and NFT markets? Petcha thinks so. There's definitely a correlation. Yeah, points early on when, when NFTs started to boom, there was a lot of thought that, uh, you know, NFTs were either resilient to whichever way crypto was going, or there were thoughts that, you know, if, if crypto was really high, well, NFTs would maybe go the other way. And if crypto was low, well, then these NFTs were on discount. But they seem to be in lockstep. When crypto's down, um, NFTs seem to be down now. I, I don't know exactly why it's playing out that way and why it doesn't mirror what we thought, but they're, they're attached at the hip. Despite this, Petra is still expecting growth in the market. Projects from Yuga Labs continue to dominate the top of the best sellers list for the month, with Board Ape Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, and CryptoPunks all on the top five. One growth area is art. 
Patch just said he sees attention beginning to move away from NFTs as simply profile pictures to more fully flinched pieces of art as more creators move into the space. Art has really kind of come to the forefront that, again, while the profile pictures aren't so hot right now, um, the art is, it just keeps growing. The, the number of artists entering the space just keeps growing and the number of collectors seems to as well. Meanwhile, Pesha also told Forecast that he expects sports to be another real growth area going forward, saying these tokens typically involve increased utility, which is beginning to excite the market. They include Wagme United. Released by English minor division soccer club Crawley Town FC, fans gain the opportunity to vote and participate in team decisions through the ownership of NFTs. I'm Lachlan Keller, Forecast. All right, that's it from us. Like and subscribe to this video for more content like it and let us know your thoughts on what's happening in the comments.